Alrighty guys, it is Quaman here today and I'm bringing you another sports segment and I was quite surprised after I looked at my most recent Quaman talks where I did a discussion on how I basically went from being a Yu-Gi-Oh channel to a Dragon Ball channel and quite a few of you, especially Jack Flash and LeBron Chase, I believe that was what his name was, you guys were requesting me to discuss the NBA Finals and I I'm more than open to do it. Uh, quite a few of you actually agreed with it, along with Nitro. And quite frankly, guys, I mean, I'd love to talk a lot more basketball, but I just feel like, you know, as a, a Dragon Ball Z audience, you guys wouldn't accept it. But tr quite frankly, I love talking sports. And, you know, for the future, I might do more sports segments, but I'm not alone as I am joined with. What is going on, everybody? James Krasnerik is back here. Glad to help Quam Man on another sports segment. What are we going to talk about again tonight, my friend? Well, we're going to be talking about a game that ended probably about an hour ago in the NBA Finals. And it's perfect to talk about this now because the game's still fresh in our head. So without wasting any more time, James and I are just going to just spitball our general thoughts on this, you know, NBA Finals series that went a long way. So without wasting any more time, James, why don't you start off by telling our fans and viewers your thoughts on this series as a whole? Well, for one, this series, I can briefly describe it like this. And I think that, Kwame, you would agree with me. Golden State came into this series, 67 regular season wins. They blew out every team in the playoffs they went against. They were just unbeatable. And Cleveland gave them a very good series. And I think the single reason for that is LeBron James. I know many people are going to comment that Steph Curry did not have a great series. He was brilliant in Game 5 with 37 points. But if you look at the series as a whole, he was, other than Game 5, largely unimpressive. And LeBron James literally took a Cleveland Cavaliers team with no Kevin Love and no Kyrie Irving and pretty much put him on his back. Basically, this series, this series was the Golden State Warriors against LeBron James. And LeBron almost... LeBron gave him a good series. I mean, I can't take it away. I mean, you look at what he did. He accounted for, in this series, 38.3% of his team's points. The only time a player has accounted for more percentage of a team's points was Michael Jordan one year when the Bulls won their title. Which one of their six ones, I cannot remember which one it was. But, yeah, just... Kwame, what do you have to say? Because from the looks of it, Golden State took on pretty much just LeBron James because the rest of the team played okay, but like nothing compared to what the Warriors had to offer. Well, you know, James, we were talking about this back and forth and a lot of people were saying how Matthew, uh, Matthew Del Vadova, we could just call him Delhi, you know, for to save time in this video. Delhi played pretty well at certain stretches and Quite frankly, outside of Delhi and a big game from Timothy Mozgov, the rest of the Cavaliers were very inconsistent. I mean, I don't, I don't want to go and exaggerate and say, okay, well, LeBron had no help. I wouldn't go that far because obviously, a lot of people over exaggerate, James, and we've we've been on the record discussing before. A lot of people exaggerate you know the individualism in the nba and quite frankly james it might be a sport where one man can make a bigger difference than a po than suppose maybe football but it's still at the end of the day a team sport and quite frankly i don't think lebron i i, I won't exaggerate and say lebron had no help but i definitely think he didn't get as much help as he needed to to win this championship and i do feel after looking at this series and the way lebron played I am probably about 70% sure that they would have won the series had they had Kyrie and Kevin Love. Now, now I, I don't like saying guarantees in sports because you never know because having Kyrie and having Kevin Love can change the way Golden State plays and the way Golden State changes the way they play can either be beneficial or detrimental. You don't know. There's so many factors that go into a series. But one of the first things I wanted to just mention is that I just think that as a whole this series was very 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 competitive yes in game four was it yeah game four that was they got completely annihilated at home in game four but i mean quite frankly outside of game four they pretty much held their own against a vastly superior team and quite frankly golden state got sloppy they should have swept them 
or probably gone five games most against this Cleveland team and celebrated in front of their home fans. I don't honestly think that this series should have even have gone past five games, quite frankly. And, you know, I, get, I, I really commend the Cleveland Cavaliers. And, you know, if there was one player I, I should probably blame for not stepping up as much, I mean, because you really can't expect that much out of their, the rest of their roster because they're not used to playing at a very high level. The only player I really felt they should have stepped up more in this series was J.R. Smith. He's the only other guy on, on Cleveland's roster who can create a shot for himself. And I felt that if J.R. Smith stepped his game up and played like the sixth man of the year he was a couple years ago, or at least like a quasi all-star player, I truly feel like they could have probably at least pushed it to seven games. What do you say? I would agree with that. And we can always throw around these hypothetical situations too. I mean, you and I both agree that it's a strong possibility that had Cleveland had their guns, Kevin Love and Kyrie Irving, that they would be taking this trophy back home to Cleveland. I think, would you, would you agree with that really quickly? I wouldn't say for guarantee, as I was saying, but I'd say it's a much better chance. Yeah, so factoring in that, Steph Curry, again, he didn't play great in the finals, but let's put it this way. If LeBron, you know, the help that he had with J.R. Smith in a couple games, because he did have 19 points in this game. I will give him that. He had 19 points coming off the bench. But as a whole, the rest of the team was inconsistent, and that really, it really didn't do LeBron any favors. Well, James, now, quick question: What do you, what do you have to mention with Delhi? What was your opinion of him in this series? Delhi had some good moments on Steph Curry. I believe it was in Game Two he really hampered what Steph Curry did, and the Cavaliers, of course, won that game, 95-93. And in that game, Steph Curry, I mean, he only had 19 points, so he was really able to shut Curry down. Or at least slow him down to some degree. Yeah, he was able to slow him down to the point where it was easier for Cleveland to keep up. Right. Hmm. But finish what you were saying, James. But to continue on what I have to say, if Cleveland had if Cleveland had all their guns healthy, and if Cleveland had all their guns healthy and Steph Curry and the, not Steph Curry, but the, but the Warriors played about as well as they did. I do believe that, that Cleveland would have been taking this trophy home. It's, 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 a, it's a stretch to say a guarantee, but if you give LeBron the help that he'd been getting in the playoffs from the guys that he had, I mean, I would not have been shocked at all to see it, and I probably would have been surprised had the Warriors won because I know Golden State's a very good basketball team, but just you give LeBron help and you just see what he did in Miami. I mean, it's it was such a sight to watch how good he was. Right. Now, I mean, James, you know, to just tackle a couple more topics in this video, uh, I wanted to discuss the whole thing that we were talking off the air earlier about, you know, should LeBron have won, you know, the MVP had, you know, even in, even in a losing effort. I just want to start off, I even though Andre Iguodala significantly stepped his game up and was inserted into the starting lineup, I don't personally think Iguodala deserved the award. I still think that even with Steph's struggles, he was the MVP of the series. But I do respect, you know, Iguodala's efforts, and he did a lot on the defensive end and on the rebounding end to really give his team, you know, the edge. So I wouldn't say he was the most valuable player, but I definitely say he contributed a lot. But what do you say to the whole situation of winning the finals MVP in a losing effort, James? It's not something that we're going to see probably ever in any of the four American sports, baseball, hockey, football, and basketball, I don't think we're ever going to see a losing player win the MVP um, for, the, for the championship series or championship game. We're not going to see it. And, and the reason the why it's simple, because... Nowadays, it's just so hard to picture because back when the old days, because we were mentioning Jerry West one time won NBA Finals MVP and his team lost, and Chuck Cowley, who was a linebacker for the Cowboys, won the MVP of the Super Bowl when the Colts beat them. But that was back in 1971. So it's just the way the game has evolved now with all four sports. I, I can't really even give a reason. It's tough to, but it's just to say... Usually one player from the winning team usually plays well enough just to win the MVP. It's just that simple. I mean, LeBron James was 
incandescent this entire series. But the fact that he lost proves he didn't deserve the Finals MVP. I mean, it's a it's a kind of a blunt way of putting it, but he didn't deserve it because his team didn't win. Well, the thing is, James, is the reason I've and I've had many debates with some of my friends about this. I don't believe that any player should win the Finals MVP in a losing effort. And the reason why I said it is for two reasons. Number one, it's the principle. And what I mean by the principle is because LeBron put up a Herculean effort, that kind of dissuades people from saying, well, how do I win the Finals MVP? Do I just have to play really, really well and I still and lose, but my team still, you know, obviously... You know, gets to, I get to keep the individual award. I mean, look at Allen Iverson in 2001. I mean, you know, he put up a monstrous effort, you know, for his Philadelphia 76ers in the losing effort, and they lost in five games. But Iverson put that team on his small back, and he really played well. And even in a losing effort, Iverson, in my opinion, was the MVP of that series as an individual player. But, I mean, there's only so much you can do when you're going up against a significantly better team with more star power as a whole. So, I mean, you look at that and you look at other great, you know, final series like LeBron in 2007 when your Spurs swept him. And if you also look at LeBron in 2014 when your Spurs almost swept him again. I mean, you, you got to think to yourself... In those situations, LeBron was the best player. And in that situation of Iverson, Iverson was the best player, but they were on losing situations. And then now, if they were to give him the award, well, it could be like, well, what do you need to win the award? Do you have to play really, really well? Because if you think about it, James, last year, LeBron should have won the finals MVP over Kawhi Leonard, right? Because individually, he played much better individually than Kawhi did, but Kawhi won the award because he was on the winning team. And I think that because of the principle and because of how hard it is to define what it is to win the award, I say give it to the most valuable player on the on the winning team to just keep it right. Because, James, you said in 71, Chuck Caffley won the award, right? And in 69, Jerry West won it. And these are a long time ago, so I personally agree with you that you know, for the principle of the game, a losing player should never win it. And, and, you know, I was talking to my dad about this, and he was saying it's kind of like you're patting them on the back for trying. And that's not the way you celebrate people. You don't celebrate a guy for saying, hey, you know what? Your team lost, but you know what? You tried and you put up a good effort. No, you don't win like that. That's not what winners do. And that's quite frankly what I have to say about that whole series. Do you? What do you say to that, James? One more thing. Wouldn't it also be really awkward if LeBron is sitting in the losing locker room with the finals MVP trophy? While Steph and Andre Iguodala and the rest of the gang are celebrating in the other room? Yep. Yeah. That just makes it so awkward. I think it's that awkwardness that helps out. And personally, would you honestly accept that award if you were LeBron James no I wouldn't want to accept it I lost I wouldn't want to I would it. say take that award and go hand it to whomever I thought was the finals MVP and say this person was the finals MVP and if I go down in history as the finals MVP I'm going to be pissed off right. that's how I would do it right. right well that essentially concludes those two and now to move on to another topic I want to talk about David Blatt James uh, there's quite a few things we want to say here what do you have to say about David Blatt, you know, the whole thing about, you know, people making rumors he should be fired? And quite frankly, I just want to start off by saying I personally want to say that David Blatt was given the Cleveland Cavaliers job with the expectation that he was going to be coaching a rebuilding team. Do you agree? Yes, he was. There was no way anybody knew at the time LeBron was going to come. To right. Play. He was, he was thinking he was going to work on a rebuilding project in Cleveland with the Cavaliers. He was a I believe he was a five-time Israeli basketball champion. He had a lot of experience overseas. And he was coming into aid with a rebuilding project. He was given a contender in terms of talent, acquiring J.R., Shumpert, Love, Kyrie Irving, trading in Way Wiggins. And they make it all the way to the finals. And I say, well, for a rookie coach, with the exception of Steve Kerr, can you really ask more? I mean, the guy got him to the finals. Yes, can you say Kyrie, Kevin Love, and LeBron carried him to the finals? Can you say that? Well, you could, okay? 
obviously uh, uh, in sports the players have a lot of a role you know a lot of people were saying the same thing about John Fox too you know James for football saying that you know those ridiculously talented four horses of the receivers that he had carried him to the championship round you know and let's not talk about what Seattle did to them but in, but I mean, the point is, is that yes, your players have a lot to do with it. But does that take away him as a coach? Did he make his mistakes, James, in this series? Yes. And yes. Yeah, absolutely. Him and Steve Kerr are both rookie head coach, and you both saw them make mistakes. But to be honest, the coach—I hate to cut you off here—the coach. Well, no, talk, James. A, the coach led a team that, even when they had all three pieces—LeBron, Kyrie, and Kevin Love—they were still trying to figure it out. He led that team. They made the NBA Finals. And how much more can you ask of a rookie coach to, to make the NBA Finals? We had two rookie coaches in the NBA Finals. You're never going to see that in Super Bowl history. You're never going to see two rookie head coaches go head-to-head in the Super Bowl. In the NBA, I mean, it's just, it's just incredible, both these guys, particularly Black, because there was no guarantee that LeBron was going to be here. None at all. Right. He definitely deserves to stay at least another couple of years. He's earned it. I agree. And I mean, this black ass thing happening. He deserves to stay. I mean, honestly, I mean, you agree that he should, you know, obviously keep his job. I personally, you know, agree that, you know, I mean, give the man a break. I mean, what more can you ask out of him? I mean, yeah, he made his mistakes, but I mean, we're all human, right? But anyways, moving on to... The next subject, we discussed all that. Igudala, yes, no. I personally, we already discussed whether or not he should deserve the award. So let's move on to the next topic of what happens now. You know, what happens going forward, you know, with the Cleveland Cavaliers organization, with the Warriors. How do you think this will play out for future usage? And what do you say, James? The Golden State Warriors have put together a team that if they keep their pieces in place, they're going to be a contender for the next 11, six, seven years. Easy. Their guys are young. Their guys are talented. They're hungry. They're going to want more. They are. And as for Cleveland, I would not be surprised if we saw this as the NBA Finals matchup next year. I would not be surprised. Not at all. Because LeBron will be back. Kevin Love has himself said he wants to be back. Kyrie Irving's been locked up for a big deal. Those three guys in a decent bench, I can't see any team in the East upsetting them. You know, it pains me to say this, James, because I'm obviously a Heat fan, and, you know, although Dragic and Whiteside have been great additions, I don't, I can't see us beating them either. Because if LeBron could push the Warriors to six games with minimal help from his teammates... I don't see how um, a Cavaliers team with more chemistry and more and more experience is not going to do it because you, you got to understand, James. We've talked about this before. When you lose a championship the year before, there's something that burns you to get back. And you know, the the Seahawks won this year. I'm sorry, the Seahawks won la- the year before, lost this year, and, you know, they shouldn't have lost, but I feel like they have something on their back. It kind of reminds me about what happens with the Baltimore Ravens in 2012 when they lost to the Patriots, and then they came back, and they basically dominated and won the Super Bowl. And I remember I was talking to my dad, and my dad, after the the Ravens have lost on that by that kick, Billy Cundiff, I believe that's what his name was. After Billy Cundiff missed that kick, my dad was like, the, the Ravens are going to win the Super Bowl next year. And that's exactly what happened. And I feel like that kind of gives a little bit of motivation to the to the Cleveland Cavaliers. because, And the same thing for your Spurs. You know, you guys lost a very, very close finals to us. You guys came back the next year and, you know, you guys put a spanking on us. And I, I think that at the end of the day, you know... This series was fun, James. I had a lot of fun watching it. What do you say? I thought it was a great series, but actually I have one, two more things to add real quick. You were talking about the fact that your Heat probably is going to have a tough time making a dent against the Cavs. My Spurs are probably not going to have much more luck against the Warriors because just the fact the Spurs are getting up there in age and the Warriors are so young. But the next thing I want to say is, isn't there something on Wikipedia we need to talk about here? Yes, guys, a little funny image that I wanted to close this out with. Uh, 
basically, James and I found, you know, right after the finals that there's probably a troll on Wikipedia, but as you guys can see in this image right here that I'm showing you, there's actually an image of the, my, the, the NBA finals, and in the corner, you can see right here, for Cleveland Cavaliers coach, who do they say, James? LeBron James. <laughs> it actually, actually right now, um, I just checked it, and it has been changed back to David Blatt and the Cleveland Cavaliers. But yes, when I went home and went to check it on Wikipedia prior to this segment, it said the team is named LeBron James and the coach is named LeBron James. Right. Well, yeah, that's basically it, guys. We got you that, you know, right before it was changed. And at the end of the day, James, I mean, if I just had to sum everything up, I just think that the that the Warriors were a significantly better team all around with a subpar Curry and a Thompson who wasn't the best offensively throughout the series. Their team core is so strong that they could win without those guys playing at an elite level because they have such a strong core. And quite frankly... If you look at the way the games were from a strategic basketball perspective, going small ball versus going big, the main point of this was was if you really looked at the plays, every time Steph Curry touched the ball, he was almost double teamed on every nearly on on almost every possession. And Cleveland was picking their poison because there's like, well, do we let Steph have the ball? Or do we let the other guys beat us? And that's basically what happened. The other guys beat him because Steph Curry was giving Iguodala and a lot of Harrison Barnes, Thompson at times. He was giving a lot of his other guys open looks because every time they were double teaming him. And you're not going to win with open guys who can make shots all the time. And, you know, there really wasn't much Cleveland could do because they didn't have the rotations to really afford, you know, defending man to man. And Kyrie's not even that great of a defender, even, you know, even if he's healthy so ultimately james i had a lot of fun watching the series this golden state warriors are my second favorite team in the league you know right behind my heat you know i don't know where they rank for you you know you personally steph curry's i like them i like them they're not a top they're not one of my two or three favorite teams but i do like them steph curry's my favorite non-heat player so at the end of the day i had fun watching this i'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below if you guys are interested in more sports topics understand that guys i am a huge sports fan i will talk sports as much as i talk dragon ball if not more if you guys want me to i mean i've i'm a huge nba nfl fan so is james i mean james and i have had many times where we spend six seven hours on skype and he'll tell you these days where we just we're supposed to do a video and just ended up those, talking about sports yeah those are fun like we have like yeah we're gonna talk about this this it doesn't do anything yeah. sports are a lot of fun guys because the thing is about sports is that there's always something to say because there's so much history and there's always new stuff happening so you never run out of stuff to say but that's been our video for today guys it's been kind of long i'm not gonna make multiple videos about the finals you know i'm just gonna make one nice long video if you guys want to hear my thoughts you know more sports topics i'd love to do them and you know who i was thinking of possibly doing one sports video a week you know when the nfl and nba season arise if you guys don't want it that's up to you but if you guys do i'm willing to do it and you know quite frankly if i'm really into it i'll do it so i hope you guys enjoyed please check out james chris Nick's channel in the description and most importantly over everything else what james please remember to rate comment and subscribe and remember at the end of every single video as Quaman says to what have a great day guys